Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. Welcome to Gatan webinar. My name is Chang Lu. I am an application specialist based in Beijing, China. Today, we are very delighted to welcome Dr. Xiao Ge Wang from Peking University to give us a talk about 3D ED. 3D ED, or three dimensional electron diffraction, is also known as CRED, continuous rotational electron diffraction or micro-ED, microcrystal electron diffraction. It is a fascinating technology for crystallographic researchers. And every single year, we can see a lot of papers working on this technique, try to decipher a lot of unknown structure to find out the precise atomic arrangement. Dr. Wang has been working on 3D ED since her PhD. So we're lucky to have this expert for our audience. And last year, we were very glad to place Stella, the one and only hyperpixel camera that is fully integrated into Gatan Microscopy Suite software. And like I said, we placed Stella in Peking University for demo. And as far as I know, Stella got many interesting results there. So we are very looking forward to what Dr. Wang could bring us today about how 3D data is collected and how those data are analyzed. Now, Dr. Wang, the stage is yours. Thanks, Gaetan, for arranging this webinar. Today, uh, I will mainly talk about the data collection and the data analysis of, of the three-dimensional electron diffraction. Uh, for the data collection, uh, collection part, uh, what are the keys to, pro to producing better data quality? And for uh, data analysis section, I will briefly review the data processing uh, a processing software and uh, explain how uh, the crystal stru structure could be determined from the three dimensional electron dif diffraction data set. Uh, after uh, more than 100 years of development, uh, single crystal X ray diffraction is a common method, uh, method to determine the structures of the materials. Uh, nevertheless, the weak, the weak interaction between the X-ray and the matter requires the crystal should be larger, uh, like it should be larger than uh, five micrometer. And uh, with the development of the three-dimensional electron diffraction, because of the strong uh, interaction between the electron beam and the matter, it could uh, solve the structure uh, even the sample is just uh, several hundred nanometers. Uh, so the 3D dimensional provide a powerful tool for the researchers to extend, extending the limit of the single crystal X-ray diffraction method. And uh, also uh, now the uh, 3D ED is an important uh, tool for the structure determination uh, for the sample screening and uh, for the phase identification. There is a long history to using the electron diffraction to solve crystal structure. Uh, at the very beginning, we can only collect the uh, diffraction pattern. And to analyze more information, we could uh, collect the different pattern from the zone axis. Of, but it was time consuming and uh, it requires repair experiments. And only the limited reciprocal space could be collected. Uh, later, with the development of the ABT method, uh, it adds the stepwise rotation of the goniometer. Uh, thus, the more reciprocal space could be acquired. Uh, of course, there is still some uh, the missing on uh, the missing depth range. As the strong interaction between the electrons and the matters, it also uh, another problem also uh, appear. That is, the electron diffraction process breaks the kinematic relationship between the diffraction intensity and the structure factor. With to solve this problem, the procession electron beam was involved. The better diffraction patterns with, with fewer dynamic effects could be collected. 
and uh, then the rotation uh, rotation electron diffraction method that is right method also uh, was also developed the right method combines the beam tilt and the gometer tilt to collect the three three dimensional electron diffraction uh, uh, let's compare the ADT and the right the right could uh, uh, feel some the uh, feel some the missing uh, the missing gap and recently, with the development of the better cameras, uh, better camera that means uh, the improvement of the frame rate, the shorter dead time, higher frame rate, higher dynamic range, and the better signal to noise ratio. With the better uh, cameras, a continuous rotation of the gometer mode could be achieved. It is faster, and uh, the gap of the reciprocal space become, become smaller than the previous all the method. And, and, uh, it, it is uh, very low. And uh, now the well-known widely used uh, 3D ED method like the series of the macro, macro ED are all developed based on the continuous rotation mode of the gaonimeter. Uh, from this slide, uh, uh, we will show several typical three-dimensional uh, three ED data collection processes step-by-step. Uh, step. The um, Firstly, the microscope needs routine alignment to achieve better performance. Uh, for the right method, the beam tilt direction should be aligned in accordance with the goniometer tilt. And then we need to find a crystal of interest and adjust its height to ensure it will not move out of the SA aperture too far during the data collection. Uh, and then we would tilt the goniometer to the lowest limit, insert the SA aperture, and apply the diffraction mode. And the parameter uh, tilt and the goniometer uh, tilt should be carefully entered. Then the data could be collected. During the data acquisition, we could stop uh, several times uh, to check if the particle is out of the assay aperture and uh, to drag it back to the assay aperture if it is move out. On the uh, right hand side, there is the interface of uh, one data collection software, IDC. As uh, we could see, we need to input uh, some parameters, such as uh, the explorer time uh, and the stage uh, tilt step and also the beam tilt step. This is, all this is important for the overall data collection. Uh, with the right method to collect 3 dd uh, uh, typically we need about 30 minutes for one crystal to uh, get a full uh, 3D ED data. And uh, recently, uh, we often use uh, the continuous rotation uh, methods like the macro ED or the C-RED. Uh, for the C-RED methods, we use the instead matic here uh, in our lab. We use the instead matic. This is a uh, a small script de uh, developed by Stockholm University. It could run uh, on the Gaitan DM software. As we can see, the uh, general uh, data collection logic is similar. And uh, uh, here, because we use a faster camera, uh, the data uh, it is more efficient, and the data collection time is down to uh, several minutes for one crystal. To fully achieve a uh, 3D ED data collection, uh, we need to consider the compatibility of the TM uh, cameras, holders, and the softwares. In our lab, we use the gel TM to do the 3D ED experiments. Uh, one advantage of the 3D ED is that it doesn't require the most advanced microscope, uh, the Leipzig filament, could also do this job well. 
we also have a Gaitan uh, credit holder with a high tilt angle. The high tilt angle is important. It is important, it is vital to achieve the high data completeness. Uh, sometimes for the beam sensitive materials, uh, cryo temperature is important for this uh, for the sample's stability. And for the cameras, we use the different cameras uh, uh, at, a, at a time long ago. Uh, we use uh, Er Lang Shen. It is a CCD camera, and uh, uh, most of the time recently we use the uh, CMOS uh, camera One View to collect three D ED. And uh, last year we have uh, uh, a short time to have a style of a demo. Uh, it is a hybrid pixel pixel camera, and with a different uh, camera. Uh, generally, we use a different software to collect the. 3DED. For the Er Lang Shen camera, uh, we use the uh, red method, red C. And uh, just uh, bef uh, like before, uh, we collect uh, one crystal, it uh, usually need uh, about half, uh, half hour. And uh, for the uh, Simps camera, the Simps camera, it has uh, uh, the hair frame rate, uh, for example, for five or twelve, for five twelve by twelve twelve, the frame rate is about uh three hundred fps, so that the dead time is relatively low, and uh, thus we could use the uh, C rider mode, and uh, generally we need several uh, several minutes to collect one crystal, and uh, for the Stella. We also use the the uh, uh the uh, C red mode, and uh, the collection time is also about uh, several minutes. Uh, because the Stella is a direct electron detection camera, and uh, generally the diffraction is more sensitive, and uh, the intensity is more more accurate. And uh, the as the frame time, uh, as the frame rate of the Stella is about uh, sixteen thousand FPS, so uh, the dead time could be lower and lower than the CMOS camera one view. Here is a real example uh, about the three D data collection, and uh, when we find a uh, crystal of interest, typically it should have the a regular shape and the size is about uh, several hundred, uh, several hundred, like uh, two hundred, uh, several hundred nanometers, like uh, two hundred nanometers to five, uh, five hundred nanometers. Uh, then uh, we will adjust the intrinsic height to ensure uh, the position stability during the rotation and check the diffraction pattern is okay. Uh, because uh, during the uh, Real continuous rotation of the TM holder, uh, the target particle would move, um, and it is uh, often move out of the SA aperture. So we need to drag it back, uh, to help us drag it back during the several minutes. Uh, generally, we would use an inter intervolic defrox so that uh, we could check. To ensure that the particle is or not uh, in the as the aperture during the data, data collection to help us to drag it back. After the data collection, uh, we would uh, uh, talk about the data analysis process. The data analysis process have two parts. The first is the AD image processing. And then is the structure determination. In the image processing, firstly, we need to omit uh, the defaulted image that is not the real diffraction data. And then we need to identify the diffraction spots, uh, followed by diffraction patterns, uh, reconstruction in 3D ED uh, space. And the next step is to determine the right intercell. And finally, 
we would uh, integrate uh, diffraction testing and output the uh, the integrate uh, the intensity of field that is HK uh, generally it is HKR field. For the structure determination, uh, we use the classical uh, crystallographic methods uh, such as uh, uh, the the method often used in single crystal X-ray, uh, uh, XRD or powder XRD. We mainly use the uh, uh, direct method, uh, the intrinsic phasing or super flip method to uh, for the structure solution. And after structure solution, uh, what would we do in the structure refinement? Uh, generally, we need to do the PXRD refinement. And also for some, for some data, we could also or do the kinematic and the dynamic refinement about uh, against the 3D ED uh, data. Uh, for example, here uh, I have a general reconstruction workflow on the IDP software. We need to uh, firstly we need to input the uh, data collection parameters and also input the data itself. Such as uh, the for the parameters such as the uh, wavelengths, uh, camera pixel size, and the rotation axis of the gonometer, and then the transmission spot is aligned, followed by the search for the diffraction spots. Later, the diffractions are merged. Uh, why the diffraction should be merged? It is because uh, one diffraction spot uh, may spread on adjacent frames of the diffraction patterns, so it uh, should be merged to one spot. Here we show the uh, diffraction data in the reciprocal space, and uh, then the software would uh, find the intercell and uh, index it uh, and uh, give us the HKR output. Uh, like in this picture, the white dots are indexed and the red ones are not in, uh, indexed. In the software of uh, red P, we could see the uh, 3D viewer control panel. We can see the diffraction spots uh, in different conditions by the, by the spots are labeled by different colors. By this function, we could also uh, section the diffraction spots from a specific plan to label them with different color. Like here for the uh, 3D, 3D ED data, we could label just one layer and adjust it into different dire direction. We could see the diffraction pattern of a specific plan. This is very useful uh, when we need to check or determine the symmetry of the sample. Uh, here is another software to uh, for the reciprocal space reconstruction. It is called the PITES. Uh, the PITES was um, specially developed for the 3D uh, PEDP data. The main point of the PI software is to uh, integrate both the kinematic intensity and the dynamic intensity for the structure uh, refinement using, uh, using the precision electron diffraction tomography and the dynamic diffract, uh, diffraction. The detailed process has been uh, explained in this uh, in these papers by the planet, uh, Palatinus. Uh, Professor Palatinus. And uh, what I want to mention is the kinematic uh, data, uh, data and the dynamic dynamic data, the difference uh, between them. Uh, for the kinetic, uh, in the in for the kinetic uh, uh, intensity, the intensities belong to the same reflection on the agent frames are integrated together to one spot. Well, for the dynamic refinement, the dynamic intensities are integrated on the um, intensities on or uh, just per, per frame basis. Uh, they won't uh, it, uh, the merge the merge process won't be conducted. 
and uh, uh, for the red data or serial data, if we want to analyze it by the pads, the data process of pads is similar to the IDP software. However, the pads have some special features, uh, like here, we could show that the pads could find intercell manually. We can drag this uh, blue line to determine the different directions of the intercell, like A, B, and C. And after the HKL output, there is another uh, 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 function in that uh, the pads could section the specific plan automatically, uh, uh, not like the IDP. For, uh, in the IDP, we need to uh, manually to determine the uh, specific, uh, specific plan. Uh, the automatic uh, the automatic section is also very uh, useful for the symmetry determination. The third software we often use uh, is XDS. Uh, XDS is uh, um, based on the Linux uh, Linux system. Uh, similarly, we need to input the basic parameters here, and uh, uh, also the search for the peak, the search for uh, the intensity integration, and the HK outputs uh, would be processed. And uh, the reciprocal uh, space could also be viewed uh, in the X XDS software. Uh, there are uh, uh, several very common problems uh, during the data collection. Uh, for example, uh, the, sample, the sample would be damaged by the electron beam. Uh, the result is that uh, the initial uh, diffraction may be good, uh, but uh, with the time uh, with the time go, uh, the 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 last uh, frame the uh, the last frames uh, the the diffraction on the last frames may be mm, not good or may be weak, and then uh. Uh, as the gametor rotation, the particle may move out of, out of the as the aperture. That's some uh, for some for some frames the intensity is not accurate at all. There is no intensity, and often we would meet the twin crystals of the impure thesis. To overcome this problem, uh, generally we need to collect multiple data sets to ensure the data quality and eventually we could uh, uh, solve the so that we could solve the structure for the multiple data sets uh, professor Zhou's team from stockholm university has developed the uh, the ID tools to achieve the automatic data processing uh, data processing uh, as we can see the xds is also uh, uh, the the AD tools should be work with XDS software, and they are both based on the Python. Uh, uh, the XDS is is based on the Python. Uh, in this in this software, uh, in this software, uh, the accurate rotation axis could be optimized globally. Um, over the intercell uh, statistics and the uh, intercell statistics and the data quality statistics. Uh, statistics for the multiple data sets could be revealed. Uh, it could give, uh, give us more information about uh, the different data set so that we could choose uh, choose the best one or we could choose to merge these data sets for the structure determination. Here we have a summary about the uh, output uh, fields from these three software that we often use uh, to analyze the 3D data. Uh, the other uh, the, the output fields are similar. Uh, the information are mainly about the intensity data, uh, the intercell, and the symmetry information. Uh, generally, uh, for the HKL fields, we use the Shilex or Olex to solve these fields. Uh, by the direct methods or the intrinsic physics method. And uh, for the 
uh, pets, we could have both the kinematic intensity data or the dynamic intensity data, if, uh, especially when the data was collected by the PED method. We can use the uh, YANA to process the data. The kin kinematic intensity uh, was used for the structure solution and also used for the kinematic refinement. Well, the dynamic intensity was used for the dynamic refinement. The real, uh, the real process, uh, process uh, the real uh, refinement process is complex, and uh, because of there would be more different uh, in par parameters. And uh, for YAML software, it also could uh, connect with other software like a server or the Shilex, so that uh, we could also use YANA as a platform to uh, uh, to determine the structure by other method. The signature analysis is always important during the structure solution, and uh, uh, this is a typical uh, IDP result here. The software found a unit cell solution. In, in this step, we could use this link. This link is about the test lattice type uh, so that uh, we, uh, we can see many trans, uh, transformation metrics uh, based on the initial intercell to other uh, symmetry or other intended cell. If we want to use other symmetry, uh, we can use the the transformation matrix to transform the intercell to get uh, uh, the different uh, uh, intercell, the different symmetry, and the different HQ output fields. Uh, in the symmetry analysis, the section uh, section of specific, uh, specific plan is also important uh, by the IDP or by the pipes. We could also achieve this. Uh, this aim and uh, uh, here uh, in this case in the pipes uh, the zero p zero plan in the yellow box is highlighted and we can see the extinction extinction between the diffraction spots uh, so that uh, we can uh, write the detailed uh, the detailed diffraction conditions and uh, the detailed uh, uh, detailed uh, symmetry uh, the and the detailed symmetry if we could uh, if we could section different plans, we could uh, determine more extinction conditions, uh, and uh, all these extinction uh, extinction conditions could be related to uh, crystal symmetry, and uh, so that uh, we can use the international crystallography table to deduce the possible right symmetry, the possible right space group for this uh, crystal that will be very helpful for the real structure solution. During the structure determination, the Shellac software could also help us to check the space uh, space group information. Uh, for this sample, firstly, uh, the software recommends the sample has a monoclinic system. Dur uh, well, during the structure uh, solution by the Shellac command, it gives another 19 options for possible solutions. And finally, we found that uh, the real crystal system is cubic. Of course, this is a very extreme example because there is a large gap from the uh, monoclinic to the cubic system. Uh, what we often miss during the data analysis is that uh, the transformation between the closed relation, uh, relation of the intercell, uh, like from the uh, monoclinic increase to the orthogonal by the diagonal relation shape of the intercell. Another aspect for the data analysis is about the data completeness. Data complete, completeness is also important for the structure solution. Going to the limited uh, angular range of the every 3D ED data set. Uh, it will be helpful 
to merge the multiple data sets to produce better data quality. And uh, we, uh, here we re recommend the two methods to uh, merge the different uh, data sets. Firstly is uh, ID tools. Uh, the ID tools uh, com uh, by combination of the ID tools and the XD data software, we could uh, merge the data before analysis. Uh, well, during the Shilex structure solution, we can also merge the data uh, by the reading another data set. So we can read uh, uh, it, it, it not limited to just one. We can read in uh, first one, uh, we can read in second, third, and fourth, and so on. So there is the flexibility depending on uh, the real data quality of the 3D ED data. Uh, there are many kinds of samples solved by the 3D ED method uh, from the stable samples like the oxide. Uh, to the metastable like, like the uh, porous materials, the lights, morph, curve, and so on, and uh, to the instable samples like the drug or the proteins. And I also uh, attach a comparison here about uh, uh, the 3D ED and uh, the X-ray and so on. The 3D is an important supplementary technique for the structure determination. Uh, besides the powder X-ray diffraction method and the single crystal X-ray uh, diffraction method. Because there are different samples that uh, 3DD could analysis. So uh, if we really want to do the 3DD, uh, I would like to put some emphasis on the sample preparation. For some large crystals, we need to smash it into finer uh, particles uh, so that uh, uh, only the small fragments uh, would be uh, used uh, would, uh, would, be, uh, would, would, would be seen in the uh, TM uh, so that the sample is not uh, uh, the diffraction spot is okay. And for some of the metastable samples, uh, we can use the cray holder to prevent the electron irradiation. And for the in stable samples like the protein, uh, the plate freezing is important, though, or like the porous, uh, porous materials, but with the gas uh, molecules, we need to use the plate freezing so that uh, we could uh, to ensure that the sample is, uh, the, the structure is uh, uh, integra integrated under the TM. Uh, for the stellar, last year we uh, tested several ten samples on it, and the, the same results are still under revision. So I simply show a series of known structure solutions. Here is an example about the SU8. It is an inorganic porous material from the Stockholm University. It is a metastable sample, uh, but uh, uh, because of the time limit, we did use the uh, liquid nitrogen, and we also wanted to have a try uh, to collect the 3D data uh, under the low beam dose at the room temperature. And uh, uh, finally, it, uh, we could solve the framework of the structure, and also the OSD, that is an organic structure directing agent, it is a small organic molecule, would also solve the solved uh, from this data. This is just the one uh, 3D data set. And here is a comparison of another uh, data set. Uh, we could see that uh, uh, the structure uh, solution is not uh, very good. And uh, we couldn't get uh, a reasonable result. And uh, we think uh, maybe uh, the sample thickness is um, uh, because of the samples, uh, this, this sample is thick, the dynamic effect is very strong. So the intensity is not very accurate. Uh, that's we couldn't get a reasonable result. So I want to uh, mention that the uh, sample thickness is very important uh, for the 3D uh, data collection. Another uh, demo sample 
is uh, the chrome morph from the Professor Jun Guo. Uh, in this case, the liquid nitrogen was used to preserve this structure. And uh, uh, we could see uh, um, uh, two data sets was merged by the AD2s and the XDS software to produce uh, uh, one HKL so that, uh, and then the structure solution, uh, and then we could conduct the structure solution, uh, both the metal and the ligand uh, could be solved here. Uh, to run up, uh, there are also some automatic data collection method I wanted to mention. Uh, one is a serial electron crystallography introduced by Professor Zhou's group from Stockholm University. Uh, another is a lighted disk where by the Gatan. Uh, for the serial electron crystallography, the data collection uh, strategy combines the uh, Gaumenter tra translation with the electron beam shift. Uh, this could allow the entire the sample stage to be pro propped. At each position of the Gaumenter, the locations of the crystals are identified using the image recognition techniques, and the data uh, are collected on each crystal. Uh, and uh, I would mention that. Uh, the electron diffraction data here is not uh, for one crystal to uh, by rotation. Uh, for one crystal, uh, the electron diffraction data are collected from the randomly oriented crystals. And uh, well, for the latitude, uh, actually I didn't use it uh, because that the software system of RTM is, is not fully compatible with the latitude D. And uh, I just heard, heard the function from the engineer that uh, the latitude D could achieve the totally automatic process like the CRAT. That means the uh, crystal identification, the intrinsic height adjustment, and the gametal rotation from the uh, minus limit to the max limit, and the, of course, the diffraction pattern was collected. So it seems amazing, but uh, um, we didn't try it. Uh, I could just say that uh, we are looking forward to uh, this for, uh, software in the future uh, because the automatic, um, uh, the automatic uh, serial method could uh, uh, alleviate the burdens for the researchers so that uh, we can uh, focus more time on the analysis. Another development about the 3 dd uh, is about the dynamic refinement. As I mentioned before, the PEVP is a good method for the dynamic uh, refinement against the 3 dd data. Uh, the processing electron diffraction uh, is generally regarded as a technique that could surprise the dynamic character of the diffractor intensity, intensities. Um, uh, because the intensities obtained by the PED tend to be closer to the kinematic uh, uh, limit than the intensities obtained uh, obten without uh, precision. Well, uh, the PED uh, may be just uh, pseudo kinematic uh, when the reflections uh, with the large structure factors tend to have uh, large intensities. So uh, for the PED data, the dynamic uh, refinement uh, or full dynamic uh, calculation for the quantitative uh, results is still very important. With the dynamic uh, refinement of the uh, PDP, uh, Professor Palatinus uh, could locate the hydrogen atom position in the structures without the uh, rigid restraints to determine the absolute configurations of nanocrystals. However, the stepwise data acquisition process in the PDT will introduce too much electrodes, which could damage the crystallinity of the beam sensitive samples. Uh, that means the, um, that, so that the, uh, the sample may be damaged and we could uh, really get the good data. And uh, that's 
I recommend this method that is the uh, combination of the PEB and the C -rise. Because the continuous rotation uh, method could uh, uh, decrease the acquisition time so that uh, the sample uh, would be okay to get the, uh, the real intensity. So the combination of the PEB and the C -rise may give us a better solution about the structure solution uh, and the dynamic uh, refinement against the 3D uh, data. Of course, the geometry of the diffraction by the PDT or the CPDT are both up a complex. So the real the real analysis would be careful and the real analysis would, would be a little different. Uh, here is the uh, uh, that is of that is all for today, and uh, uh, I would love to thank uh, Professor Sun and uh, Dr. Ju for the guidance and help during my work. And uh, I also would like to thank the time for uh, this opportunity to give our webinar and also uh, the the chance to uh, the chance to use the stereo camera and uh, also very thank the Dr. Lu for arranging this webinar. Uh, now I will have a discussion about some of your questions. Thank you. It was a brilliant talk. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Uh, let me check out the question panel. Um, there's a one question from Lin talking about, uh, do you regularly use Beam Stopper when doing, you know, 3D data collection? Uh, for the uh, for the one view camera, uh, we need to use the beam stop because if we don't use the beam stop, the diffraction intensity of the diffraction spot is very high. It will damage the camera. Uh, so we need to use this. And where well for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the camera uh, for <coughs> for the hybrid uh, for the camera like the Stella, it is a hybrid pixel. Uh, we we don't need the uh, the beam stop like, and, and just that uh, what we collect the data is just like this. There is no beam stop. And uh, uh, of course, if it is okay, we uh, we hope to collect the uh, data without a beam stop. As we can see, uh, the beam stop would mask some uh, diffraction spot. It uh, it will uh, decrease the data completeness of the uh, of one data, uh, data set. Uh, I would like to add one more uh, on this question. Uh, Dr. Wang, can you go to the previous slide to show uh, Er Lang Shen, uh, and mm -hmm. Stella? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So previously for Er Lang Shen camera, it is a CCD camera. It doesn't have really high dynamic range. So we generally suggest user to use beam stopper for diffraction measurement because we don't want to ruin the camera. And later on, we have one view, which is based on CMOS. This sensor has larger dynamic range, which means at some point, if you're using a cofab EM TM, you can use without a beam stopper if the beam is not intense. And now when we use Stella, which is a hyperpixel camera, it has a crazy high dynamic range. So typically, we do not use a beam stopper. We actually do not need to use beam stopper for diffraction because the maximum limit for a single pixel is beyond one pixel amp for the measurement. So that's all for this question. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Wang, there are actually another questions uh, from the audience. Uh, they just simply sent it to me. Uh, the first question is about the goniometer, the tilt range. Uh, do you have any comment about the 3D ED data collection process? Do you recommend, what's your opinion? Uh, should we use a high tilt angle holder or we use a low tilt angle holder or moderate tilt angle holder? How will that influence the data collection and the quality? Uh, the tilt range is, uh, it is very sensitive for the data completeness. Uh, I found that this sample maybe have, uh, these two samples maybe have a comparison. Like here, uh, we could see the real data range are similar. 
and the completeness is also similar. And uh, it is about uh, uh, 100, uh, about, about 120, and the completeness is near about 19%. Uh, for this sample, uh, here, uh, the data is about uh, um, 90, uh, the rotation range is about 90, and we can see the completeness is about uh, uh, 65%. Uh, well, for this sample, uh, the rotation range is about uh, uh, is also above uh, 120, and the completeness uh, completeness is about uh, uh, 77 percent. So uh, we can see that this is a big um, gap. Uh, of course, uh, we couldn't see that the uh, the low retention uh, range means that we couldn't solve the structure. Uh, because uh, in this process we could see that uh. uh there is just a 90, uh, a, a 90 uh, degree for the rotation range. We could also solve the structure because the real uh, structure solution, uh, the parameters to influence the real structure solution is uh, there is many parameters, uh, like the sample, uh, like here, the sample thickness, uh, or the sample, if the sample, uh, the sample was moved uh, moved away out of the assay aperture, uh, or the sample, if the sample is um, stable, because uh, uh, for the metal stable samples, the uh, the 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 uh, the, pre uh, the previous half of the data is okay, but the last half of the data may be weak, and uh, the data may be uh, just couldn't be used, and. Uh, uh, but uh, for every uh, parameter, we could see that uh, the hair rotation range is better. Uh, if the sample is uh, stable, it is better. If the sample is in the IC aperture, it is better. So uh, when we route, uh, in, in reality, we to collect the 3D uh, data, we hope that every parameter could be the best. Uh, that's my answer. Okay, so it's all depending on the symmetry and depending on the stability on a situation height. Uh, yes. There's also another question uh, about one slide in your presentation uh, from the model clinic to Qubit. Uh, the software firstly determined the structure as mono clinic, but later on, we similarly believe that is a Qubit. Uh, how did that, how did this conclusion be drawn? Uh, we have any more details uh, that can be shared on this question. This is an extreme example. Uh, I just uh, I, I just made once that in the in the in the example I found that uh, uh, firstly is a monoclinic system. Well, after the structure solution, it is cubic. Um, uh, most uh, most of the time we uh we meet this uh uh. We meet the the problem. Uh, this problem uh, maybe the uh unit cell during the related uh, symmetries like the monoclinic to the also uh, also homic. Uh, well, here uh, I would answer that why first uh uh, uh not that the real uh, structure is cubic. Why the monoclinic? Uh, why the firstly the monoclinic system was recommended? Uh, that. Uh, this uh this just uh, reflect that uh we often say the data in testing and the inter cell is not accurate from the 3 dd that is why uh also that is why every time when we uh, when we determine the structure from the 3 dd and uh, most time uh, finally, we need to do the PXRD refinement because the precision of the PXRD uh, is more accurate. Well, for for the ED, the intercell get from the ED may be uh, not, not uh, very uh, accurate. And uh, uh, and uh, during the uh, structure, uh, the intercell transformation, uh, Previously, I recommend uh, this function. That is also we we know that uh, the uh, we we have <laughs> we have the appearance that uh, maybe the first uh, intercell we get uh, from the 
uh, software may not uh, the real uh, intercell. That is why uh, we have this. Uh, uh, that, that is why that is why the develop the developer uh, add this function here test lattice type so that we can uh, see the different intercell or different symmetry. Uh, we need to check it carefully uh, before the structure through, uh, during the uh, the image process. Also uh, during the structure determination process. Okay. Okay, uh, there are still questions coming in, but we are reached to a time we have to end this presentation. And thank you all for listening, and thank you, Dr. Wang, for giving us this wonderful talk. And for the questions without an answer, we will follow up with you after this presentation. And you will be expecting this webinar to be uploaded to Youku or YouTube uh, within two weeks. So please just subscribe our channel on YouTube and Youku. And that's all for today. And thank you for listening. Bye-bye.